Hi, welcome to the Q&A recording of the film Hive, playing as part of the 11th European Union Human Rights Film Days. Today, we are happy to be talking to the director of the film, Bierta Bacholi, who is joining us from Pristina. Hi, Bierta. Hi, happy to be here with you. Hello, nice talking to you. Um, so, Bierta, after studying philosophy and cinema in Pristina, you continued uh, your training in New York City on film and television. Hive is your first feature film, and it became the first film to win all three of the main awards uh, at the Sundance Film Festival this year. It won a Grand Jury Prize, Directing Award, and Audience Award, which is a great success. Um, Hive is a drama based on the true story of Fahriye, a strong Kosovan woman whose husband went missing during the war in Kosovo in the late 1990s. Yet against all community pressure, she starts a business selling homemade uh, ajwar and honey uh, with other women in the village. So this is the true story of Fahriye. She's a real person. So my first question will be, uh, how did you find out about her story. Uh, what inspired you to take the story to the big screen? Um, thank you and for the good words about the film and, and everything uh, for the introduction. Um, I heard um, I heard this story, actually my my then boyfriend, now my husband, heard um, was listening to the news while we were still in US. And he, um, he invited me to uh, watch the news because um, he said there's this story about a woman who is telling about getting a driving license and starting to work and being prejudiced for that. And, um, and we, we watched the TV story and I was like, oh, this is a really good story and maybe we should make this a feature film. And so together we decided to go and meet Fahriye, to come back to Kosovo and meet Fahriye Hoti in person. Um, back then I had worked with Yulka Gosh on a short film, so I immediately invited Yulka as well and our friend, actor Armand, who joined us to meet Fahriye because they, they both knew her from before, especially Armand, who's an actor and producer in Kosovo, uh, knew Fahriye. So all four of us actually came, went to meet Fahriye in person and to ask her if she would like us to make a film about her. And, and so on and so forth. Um, well, Fahriye immediately accepted and because um, Ulka Gosh is a really well-known actress in Kosovo and she was really honored that Ulka will play her. Plus our friend Armand is also well-known here. So it was kind of for me easy way um, to kind of get her to accept and to trust us. Um, but at the same time uh, for me, uh, when I heard the story, I thought it's a wonderful story. I thought it's really interesting. And I even thought that maybe I could approach it with a little bit of a satirical tone, because um, that's what I did in a lot of uh, film, short films of mine, where I like took serious matters and, and approached them with a satirical comic tone to it. Uh, but then when I met Fahriye in person, the way she was talking to us, her energy, her personality, her, her character, um, really um, made me realize this has nothing to do with satirical comedy. This has to be uh, a, like a drama film and a realistic documentary style approach because she's a real person. But also I really wanted to make it a character driven drama because of the impact she had on us and especially on me. And because of her energy that she, she gave us that day, I was like, this is not just another project. This is not just a good story. This is a very strong person sitting in front of me. And I want to portray that on a big screen. And that's going to be my mission from now on. So only after kind of, only after I met her in person, I really made a decision what kind of film should I make and that I should really focus everything around that person and around portraying her uh, on a big screen. It's a fantastic portrait, really, very successful. Uh, we can feel her energy. I mean, um, and the actors, actress is really, really successful. And um, Bierta, I'm sure it was not very easy to make such a film, uh, to reflect such a historical and traumatic moment of time in the world, world history. And for those who don't know what happened exactly in 1990s, uh, could you give us a short summary on what happened and also uh, could you tell us about the main challenges you faced during the filmmaking process? Uh, what were the psychological and physical limitations for you? 
Uh, well, of course, um, well, Kosovo um, has gone through a lot and it's not just the war. Unfortunately, we've lived quite a long time in occupation where we had a regime, a political regime uh, by Milosevic put in the country. So it was like our schools were taken, um, our parents were um, uh, fired from their jobs just because they were Albanians. And a lot of, a lot of discrimination happened uh, long before the war happened. And then in 1998, after a lot of demonstrations and protests, um, the war um, happened. Um, uh, luckily, in 1999, uh, um, the NATO decided to uh, intervene and together with um, the Kosovo Liberation Army, the country was liberated. But then, especially during the times when um, there were massacres and a lot of uh, uh, people died, um, around 10,000 people died in Kosovo. Uh, but a lot of uh, massacres really happened after, um, after the bombings and after um, after the military decided to take revenge. Um, so really, in, a, in, a, in that sense, um, the village of Krusha Amada was attacked um, and people had to leave the country, but the men were taken. So uh, after the war in Kosovo, uh, over 1,600 uh, 1, people uh, had gone missing. And a lot of them are still missing even today. Um, and the village of Krusha Amada had um, a lot of men gone missing, women and children as well, but mostly men and Fahri and many other women are still looking for their beloved ones. Mm -hmm. um, so for us, um, I mean, I was a teenager when the war happened and lived through the whole occupation period. Um, for us, it was difficult in many levels. First of all, the person, um, the person that we are based that we base the story on. Um, she's alive and she will, I mean, we knew she's going to see the film after we make it. So we really wanted to honor her figure uh, and at, at the same time, at least not hurt her if she doesn't like the film. Um, so I was really, that was something that really always uh, was in my mind that I, I, I really just hoped that she's going to accept this film and like it because otherwise I don't know what, what would I do with it. Um, and at the same time, a lot of scenes when we would go through like... Um, scenes of discovering the clothes or the remains of bodies. Um, a lot of us, even though we haven't uh, also, there were people in the crew who had lost family members or, or family members are gone missing. Um, but even those of us who didn't lose anyone, we've really seen a lot of those kind of scenes, um, either in news or we saw people being, I mean, I saw a lot of people being beaten up for protesting through my window, so through my living room window, basically when I was a kid. And so for us, it, it was not easy. There was a lot of times when we, when the whole crew would cry, honestly, together with um, Ulka. Uh, but in that sense, I don't know. I think we, we spoke a lot also with actors uh, when rehearsing. It was a lot of like digging deep into our emotions, it will, how we felt during the war, what happened to us during the war. Um, it was a lot of crying in, in the rehearsals as well, but we kind of tried to use it as a healing process because I think, I think it's important to make these kind of films for, um, of course, for women empowerment. And, and that's, the main, um, that's the main objective in this film. But on the other hand, to talk about war and conflicts and in hope that raising these kind of discussions, history will not repeat itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you overcome over, uh, overcome these difficulties with success. So, um, but I, I can imagine that it must be really hard. Uh, so the film depicts a world where women can't exist alone, uh, and the society is dominated by the patriarchy. Uh, there are really emotionally disturbing scenes in the film, such as the violent reaction of the men in the village uh, to Fahriyes and the women's business. So there is gossip, there is insult, there is physical assault against the women, especially who would, uh, those who would like a little independence for themselves. Uh, how did you feel about these issues when you are writing the script? Um, I was I mean, angry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I come from Kosovo and although I was born and raised and still live in Pristina, which is the capital of Kosovo, um, I'm not so far from rural life because my father comes from a village, although in the village of my father, let's say my cousins, I mean, their mothers did not work and drive like my mother. 
um, but at least the children all went to university and are all educated, whether that's women or men. Uh, so even me coming from, I, I mean, we live in a patriarchal society. I live in a patriarchal society and I cannot deny it. Uh, and I think even today in 2021, we still have a lot more to do to call ourselves equal. Uh, and I think the whole world has a lot to do. Um, yet when I heard the story of Fahriya, when I heard the story of all these women, because as Fahriya says, she's like, I'm not the only one. Uh, there's a lot of women who had done, um, who had gone through the same things that I've gone. So, uh, and that's why she's happy the film made it and it's being seen by the whole world. Um, but at the same time, um, I was really angry and I was really trying to understand of the little things that make me feel different for the fact that I'm, um, I'm a woman, because it's not always just someone throwing a stone at you. Um, of course, that's horrible. But then it's a way we are uh, raised and um, like as doing certain things because you're a woman, uh, you have to be clean and neat because tomorrow you're going to get married and you have to be a perfect wife. Um, and, you know, you grow up in that kind of sense that you really perceive yourself differently. And then, of course, it has to be a lot of working with yourself to like make films or be a businesswoman or whatever um into like thinking of yourself as equal as um as men uh who are not taught and are not um, educated to think of themselves as somebody who's going to get married and have to be clean and neat and be good cooks and be good good fathers i mean they are educated for some of these things but you know it's usually the pressure in the women and in that sense you learn to like perceive yourself differently and i think uh, but when I heard of, of this story of, of a woman in my, I mean, I come from a country where we've gone through a lot. So like um, solidarity was something that kept us together and kept us alive uh, before the war because people really helped each other either financially or many, many other ways because it was hard to even survive. And then, and then we are very well known for hospitality. We really like people coming to our houses and, you know, um, if a guest comes to your house, you protect them with life. That was kind of like the, the, um, the law. I mean, uh, not, not like the law, the government law, cause we had no government, but it was like the law amongst people. So in, in, in a way, in a way we had a lot of good virtues. And then this thing, when it happens to, to a woman who's a widow, then people are against it. And that for me was really disappointing. And I was really really angry about it but also wanted to just um didn't really want to point fingers um, at all in a way i just really wanted to raise a discussion um mm -hmm. so that we uh, honor a woman who gave us a really good role model of of working hard and never giving up but also just to raise discussion about these things that should not repeat themselves mm -hmm. Uh, Bierta, your film is dealing with a lot of issues, actually, social issues, gender issues, but our time is limited. So uh, thank you for bringing the portrait of this, uh, you know, remarkable woman uh, to the big screen and sharing with us and uh, joining our session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having our film and having me on your q &A. Thank you. <laughs>